So let us recall the duality theorem again. So if M is a closed R orientable manifold with the fundamental class M. So we will recap what a fundamental class is. Uh, so fundamental class is just the element of the homology group of the manifold. So say M is a R orientable manifold of dimension N or N manifold. So the fundamental class when we will talk about we will say the fundamental class lies in homology group HN. So this fundamental class M belongs to homology group HN and we have this duality map which is an isomorphism. So this map is an isomorphism and it is the standard cap product. So you have alpha mapping to M cap alpha. So what is this fundamental class? So as we mentioned in orientation, this fundamental class comes from the orientation. So it is an element of the homology group and it gets mapped to the generators of some specific groups. So let us uh, write this down clearly. So M is a fundamental class means it's just an element of a homology group. Now, from these homology groups, we can have natural maps which we will just draw. So this is just an element of the homology group, but it has a special property. Yeah, so it gets mapped to generators of these homology groups. Yeah, so this comes from the orientation, the fundamental class in some sense represents the orientation of the entire manifold and as, as we talked before it gets mapped to these specific classes, the specific generators. So for every point xi you have the corresponding homology group m comma m minus xi and this fundamental class gets mapped to the generator of that group. So basically we are taking all these local orientations and then gluing them together in certain way. Certain way means we, we are homomorphisms. So let us write down the first uh, application of Punkerian duality. So this is uh, that a closed manifold of odd dimension has Euler characteristic 0. So uh, there are two cases to consider M is orientable and M is non orientable. Standard practice whenever it is non orientable, you replace coefficient z with z2. So we start with case 1. So let M be the closed N manifold. So case 1, M is orientable. So we will use the duality theorem now, rank of the homology group HI, 
this is equivalent to rank of the n minus i cohomology group we are duality yeah we are the duality isomorphism these groups are isomorphic therefore obviously the ranks are same so this is via duality now we use the universal coefficient theorem yeah so here we use the universal coefficient theorem so now we have been able to establish a relationship between homology group hi and homology group hn minus i so if n is odd uh, the all these homology groups cancel in pairs and uh, the euler characteristic is zero so um, let us write this down so h0 minus h1 and then we have plus hn minus 1 because n is odd and then minus hn because n is even so h0 with hn h1 with hn minus 1 or hi with hn minus i these cancel out so you get zero so for orientable everything was easy the only thing you have to remember is how to use the universal coefficient theorem otherwise it is very trivial so if m is non orientable we will obviously use z2 coefficients so you replace integers with z2 and uh, now instead of rank we are using dimension precisely because we are using z2 so since we are not using z we have to talk about dimension Yeah, because we were measuring rank in terms of integers so the, here we have just the dimension so the dimension would be measured like uh, yeah so the dimension would be measured in terms of what are the number of direct sum ends of z2 so but uh, the order characteristic is in terms of rank so we still need to show that this uh, so uh, notice that the above part sigma i minus 1 raised to the power i dimension of h i m comma z2 is 0 precisely by the exact same argument we had in case 1 so instead of rank just put dimension in case 1 and z with z2 and that is precisely what you get so I will repeat again for m non orientable we are replacing rank with dimension and then follow precisely case 1 exactly you get 0 the only thing we need to now show is that this dimension is equivalent to the rank so the dimension of homology group hi m comma z2 is same as the this summation is same as the summation over the ranks because summation over dimensions might not be equal to summation over the ranks so this this is the first part you have to notice for z2 the uh, homology groups and the cohomology groups are the same yeah this i think you can calculate either directly or use universal coefficient theorem So now we will definitely have to use universal coefficient theorem and in particular you will have to use the properties of the x so each z summoned
of the homology group this gives a z2 sum and of cohomology group yeah this again comes from the in the cohomology group hi m comma z2 yeah this comes from the universal coefficient theorem but we also have other cases yeah so for example for klein bottle or something like that we could have z then direct sum with z2 so we have to consider these other cases also where you, we could have z direct sum with zm or just z in one dimension and zm in the other dimension so we have to consider these zms which also might come in the homology groups so if m is even then zm will give us a z2 summon in hi m comma z2 precisely because we take the greatest common divisor in the x group of zm x group of zm comma zn is the greatest common divisor of uh, zm and n so the, if m is even it gives us actually two z2s one in i and one in i plus one so both of these will cancel out yeah because i plus one will be minus if i is plus and vice versa uh, second thing I should write if m is odd, I've written m is even, that is not correct. If m is odd, this gets mapped to 0. Yeah, so thus we have been able to show that uh, the summation over all the dimensions is same as summation over the ranks. The z summons will give us z2 summons and uh, the zm summons will give us z2 in pairs. So if the dimension summation is 0, then the rank summation will also be 0.